Good evening. The, no, it doesn't look like the news at all. I'm in a hotel. I'm staying over in a hotel in Manchester to do a thing on BBC television in the morning. So it's a last minute thing. I got up, stayed overnight, this kind of stuff. Um, and as I walked into the hotel room, there was this desk and it looked just like I should be reading the news to you. I mean, all right, the microphone's mine and there's a MacBook over there. That, so the more I look at it, there's less to do it. But actually, this is what it looked like, right? See, wouldn't you read the news? Wouldn't, shouldn't I get on with this? Other browsers are available, okay, not just Safari, of course. And then you should keep a couple of them around on your Mac because whatever the browser is, some websites won't play nice with them. It's just different websites, different browsers. You keep a couple around. But since you've got a Mac, you've got Safari. And that, and that is the one I like the most. I like it because it's fast. I like it because it doesn't need to have your battery power. Like I'm on a MacBook Pro now. Chrome would be knocking it down. But there are also five key reasons I want to talk to you about Safari being good. Five or six, call it five and a half. Five and a half tips for using Safari. Let's do that. Hello, I'm William Gallagher, and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, as always, is for writers who use and write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. Uh, do subscribe or support 58 Keys on Patreon because truly there is so much for us to talk about and put off writing because of. I wouldn't have thought, to be fair, that that would include a lot to say about browsers, but oh, it does. No, definitely does. In fact, actually, in no particular order, chiefly because I just couldn't think of a dramatic sequence for this, here are five tips for Safari on the Mac. Okay. So you've got a Safari. You have got a Safari window open, and it has a lot of tabs in it. Don't deny it. Moving between them could be faster, though, and much faster than just you know moving the mouse, clicking on the one you want. Hold down the command key, right, and tap uh, a number, a digit from one to nine, and there you go, done. You go straight to the first tab or the second or whatever number it is that you chose from one to nine. Or you do in theory. In practice, uh, there are two things. One is that actually I think you have more than nine tabs open, don't you? I'm not judging, except I am. But also, I can't help you there. That's on you. This command number thing only works for one to nine. You think it'd work for command zero as well? Give us a tenth, please, but no, one to nine. Also, I know this is true on my system. It might be different. Maybe there's something screwing this up somewhere. But command one, yeah, command two, fine, all the way. But command eight and command nine, for me, if I have more than nine tabs open, command eight and command nine, they take me to the last two tabs, whatever they are. And I have no clue why. How useful am I? Speaking of tabs, though, I may secretly judge you for having many of them open, except I do the same. I suppose. Every tab does take up a little bit of resource on your Mac. It does slow your Mac down just the tiniest bit. And if you have 11 billion tabs open, well, that tiny bit, it does add up. Also, more practically, maybe, when you have a lot of them, each individual tab gets so small that you admit this, you're, you're practically guessing which one is which when you click away to go into something. So, all in all, for your sanity, for your Mac, it's good to close tabs when you're done with a website. But since you're not going to do that, look at this instead. Tab groups. Here's Safari, right? For example, with every tab, every website I tend to need when I'm doing things for, for the Patreon version of 58 Keys. None of the tabs are for anything else. And apparently, as you look at this, there aren't any other tabs. But if I choose 58 keys from here, from this list, well, now suddenly it's all changed, hasn't it? Now everything is for 58 keys. Nothing is for Patreon. In fact, nothing is for anything else I do. And as you see, actually, I have a lot of tab groups. When I'm working for, say, the Writers Guild, for example, well, click, I'm now only working for the Writers Guild. You can make tab groups like this, by the way, by opening up all the websites you need for a particular job, and then you click on this down arrow and you choose, well, in this case, it's a new tab group with two tabs, but it will be new tab group with however many tabs you've picked. And then that's it, it's done. They're all available to you. It is brilliant. It's brilliant for switching your head out of one type of job and into another. It's brilliant enough at this that I use it constantly. And it is actually, a, it's a really a 
strong reason, I couldn't readily or happily switch from Safari to another browser. Plus, whatever you do here in Safari on this Mac, it's also on any other Mac you have, it's on your iPhone, it's on your iPad. It is sometimes though hard to remember which tab group a certain tab is in. You start searching for it and it might tell you or you might, yeah. It's also actually aggravating that sometimes, and I cannot, cannot see why, Safari will close some tabs on one of your devices. Maybe it runs out of resources, that just popped into my head, but then it also closes it on the others. So you're reopening them. The whole point was to not have to reopen them. Also, that list there, they're in the order, they were in the order I created them, so actually 58 keys was at the bottom. You can drag a tab group up and down the list, but I found that if I did that in Safari, Safari would just go, eh, that's nice, and reset it. So, I uh, call this tip 2A in case you have something like this. As well as Safari itself, Apple has another browser called the Safari Technology Preview. It's the next version of Safari before it becomes the next version of Safari. I downloaded that, I rearranged my tab groups in that, and now they've stayed where I want them. They've stayed in this Safari technology preview, but they've also now stayed in place in Safari. And on my iPhone as well. Safari profiles, this is the newest thing. Tab groups are great, uh, mostly, but what they do is they, uh, they kind of organize your work. It's still you and your work and whatever websites you have logged into. Uh, profiles go further, let me show you. Say you make a work and a home profile. Each of them has tab groups, do whatever you like in them. But some of those tabs are gonna be for sites that you might use both at work and at home. Uh, for example, in one of my jobs, I often write on a client's Threads account. So I log in as them for that, but I also have my own Threads account. With profiles, you can choose, I am working now in my work profile, and for every site you access in that profile, you log in under that client's account, that work account. But you press a button, you switch to the home profile, and now you just go to Threads as normal, and you're logged in as you, as whatever your personal account is. Separation of church and state. Yeah, whoever you're logged in as and wherever you're logging into, whatever site, you know this, you sometimes get websites that are just appalling, just so badly designed, so horrible, that you have to squint, you have to look away, and you have to kind of dodge around the adverts that cover up everything you want to read, the whole reason you were there. Naturally, the second I want to show you this and an answer to it, I can't find a site that's the absolute worst, as, as abhorrent as some of them can be. But this is a site that I like, ex except that I don't, because of all of these things, unless I click here. And now we have the peaceful reader view of this site. Now that reader view, you can also get to it, by the way, by choosing the view menu in Safari and show reader. It gets rid of ads, if you see. And you know how this works. If we all get rid of all ads, well, websites won't survive. But when it's this hard to read, what can you do? Unfortunately, by the way, you need to use this with care for your own good and interest as well. Um, it's possible, I think it's because of the way some websites are written, it's possible that choosing read a view will only show you part of an article that you want to write. I mean, most often what's happened is that the piece that you're trying to read so hard is split over several pages. I mean, the better to have room to show you more adverts. And sometimes, reader can't work that out. So you think you've read everything on the site and you're not even close. And all you can do is turn off reader to check. And by the way, turning off reader, well, you can turn off reader view by clicking on that icon again, or back in the view menu where this time that Many option has changed to see, say, um, hide reader view. Uh, last one, and actually it's related. Uh, say that there is a site, okay, that really is unbearable with how it does its ads and its popover videos and, oh well, yeah, auto playing videos when you go to all this stuff, but still you, you, you want to read it, you need to read it. Well, go to the site, then choose the Safari menu, and then Settings 4. Settings 4 will be followed by the name of whatever site you're on. Up comes this panel. Click on Use Reader Where Available. And then just click away from this panel. And in theory, you're done. 
in theory, anytime you go to that site, it'll be in read of you, forget the ads. Sometimes you click on that pane to say you've done it and it just goes back to the normal thing, not the read of you. I presume that means in some way the site is resistant, it's fighting us. But when this does work, it's bliss. That settings four section, by the way, does more as well. You can tell it to never play videos automatically. If there is one scourge of the in internet, well then the internet's improved immeasurably suddenly. But all right, one suddenly up there, definitely on the list. Going to a website and the video ad playing full blast, full volume immediately, less than reader friendly, and this stops that. So, uh, blocking auto playing ads, uh, setting reader view, profiles, tab groups, switching between tabs. Is that, is that five or six? Tell you what, let's do the, the Baker's Dozen trick and give you an extra one to make sure we've got at least five. Okay, to make sure the count is not too few. In this case, though, I believe this should work on a Mac. I can't get it to work on a Mac, but I get it a lot on my iPhone. You find a website somewhere, you've been researching away, you've got somewhere. This is going to be good. Haven't got time to read it yet, but you can say, hey, Iris, remind me of this. And it does. Isn't that marvellous? Anyway, if I don't shut up, it'll be 10 tips for Safari, or 20, and then where would we be? So for now, that's it for this edition, this hotel-bound edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Now take care of yourself. Write more, eh? It's important. And I'll see you soon.